other stuff that you guys have seen before. Um, maybe not. Maybe this is your first time. I didn't bring this, by the way, so it's not my fault that it screws up. Um, we would go to all of the camps and things like that and perform and do the entertainment. And because, of, because you guys are such a good group of people to work with, um, I fell in love with the music business and also realized that girls weren't quite as bad as I thought they were. <laughs> um, beat the heck out of skateboards and BMX bikes, that's for sure. But, uh, so, as a result of that, I became a musician, and I guess I've had a certain degree of success. And the reason why I did that was not necessarily because of the music, but because of business. And a lot of people think they turn on TV and they think that you know, you, you're a musician, you're a millionaire, you make a lot of money, you're a gangster rapper or whatever, and that's not the truth. Uh, most of the people on that you see on the TV are actually probably starting with that because the music business is run by business people, which ultimately probably most of you will become. Uh, if you want to be a musician, you better be careful because uh, you, may, you may wind up broke. And uh, is this... Are we ready to roll this thing? Okay, I just want to show you guys this. And maybe this will work. Yeah, she's on. 
So someone's going to get a new record that will be out at uh, the end of May. So if you guys are in TV watchers, you guys will probably see that. And the way the music business is operating, most people, most bands, if you know any bands, what they, what they desire is to make a demo tape, get a record deal, become Odie and the Bullfish, and they're millionaires. Uh, unfortunately, that's not really the way it is because that's not how record company works. And I'm going to give you guys a little education on the way it really works. If a record company comes to you and uh, they think that you've got something that they can sell, they will give you a loan for $250,000 or more. Now, out of that, you make your videos, you make your record, you go on tour, you do things like this, and you pay the record company back by selling records. Now, when you guys go to, what's a CD cost? 16 bucks. 15 bucks, okay? If you buy it on sale at Target, 9 dollars right? Okay. Well, it seems like somebody's getting rich off that. Well, the artist will make, off for every record that's sold, they'll make probably 25 cents. Now, if you owe a record company $250,000, and all you make is 25 cents every time you sell a record. How many records you have to sell before you pay somebody back? About a million records. Right? That's why that's why bands come and then they disappear because they don't make any money. And that is where the record companies make it all their money. Because you know what it costs to make a CD? No, it's a little more than that. About a dollar. It costs a dollar to make a CD. And you guys are paying sixteen dollars for that. So. Target's making money, Ear is making money, and the record company's making money, but the artist isn't making any money. So when I decided to get into this business, that's how I looked at it. I said, well, why in the world should I do this and let everybody else make all the money? So we've gone out and, and have done certain things to uh, create enough financial income to where we can do it. The video that you just saw cost us about $30,000 today. We just made another one that cost a little bit more than that. Uh, your average video on MTV is going to cost about $100,000. So you can see that there's a lot of money involved in this, but very little of it goes to the musicians themselves. So what I did was I went ahead and started my own record company and uh, started to put out the records myself. So when you sell a $16 record, I'm making dollars possibly off of the deal. And the reason why I did that is because that's what business is all about. That's what being an entrepreneur is all about. I understand that there was a team, your all's entrepreneurship team won state, correct? And then the parliamentary team won as well. Well, being a good entrepreneur, that's what it means, is finding where the profit is and then making that living. Now, granted, what I do is it's fun, it's a lot of fun, it's enjoyable, and if anybody in here ever gets an opportunity to do what I do, please, and trust me, don't let your lack of talent stop you, because it didn't stop me. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to be talented to make it in the music business. Turn on MTV and you can see that for sure. Um, you guys don't watch anything out there? A little bit? Does it, uh, how many people here do you watch it and, and all that kind of stuff? Single out. So, single out. Incidentally, if you guys are watching now, they're doing what they do in the spring break thing down, down in Panama City. That's where we were for spring break. We were down there with Bush and the Blue Dolls and, and all those collective so we're down with those guys. Um, any, any kind of business, whether you're selling donuts or whether you're selling rock and roll music, or actually probably for you guys selling yourself, which is what you're gonna to have to do right now. Um, you've gotta understand something, that people are only gonna judge you by what they think you are. So if you act like that you're no good, then you're no good, all right? If you carry yourself like you're successful, then everybody's gonna perceive you successful. And always remember this, Anytime that you buy a product or anything, remember that perception is reality. 
So what do you like better, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. That means Coke is better. Not really, but that's what it means to you. All right. If you if you think uh, Nirvana is better than Pearl Jam, then they are. So in your business dealings, always remember that, especially entrepreneurs, always remember that the perception of your product is the reality of the product. And the next thing I want to say is, if your entire life is nothing but success, then you're really not doing anything. If all you do is succeed, then you're not taking any risks. And you're not going to ever really be what you possibly can be. Whenever the first time our band performed, we knew 10 songs. I didn't know anything about it. I just thought, you know, hey, it's a good way to pick up chips, right? You know, I know. That's not true either, by the way, guys. <laughs> uh, we knew 10 songs. We got on stage. We got to play for four hours. Kind of hard to make 10 songs last for four hours. So what we wound up doing was, uh, I don't know, in about, about 30 minutes into the show, whenever we'd already run out of songs, we started playing Moni Moni, and we played that for the rest of the four hours. We got fired, and uh, we're told that we'd never, ever play again. And so I quit, I gave up. I had one, one show, and I was done. I quit, went to the hospital, had my jaw wire shut, because the doctor said I needed to. And during that time, I sat there, and I was thinking to myself, why in the world am I going to let somebody else tell me whether I'm going to be successful or not? Because it's none of their business. It's none of their business. It's none of Dan's business whether I'm going to be successful. It's none of their business whether you're going to be successful. It's up to you if you want to be successful. So make sure that you guys have enough failures. And if you're not failing, say, I need to go take a risk. I need to go do something. The thing that makes life that makes life fun is breaking the rules. I mean, some of the rules you're going to wind up in prison if you break them. But I wouldn't suggest that. But there are there are a lot of rules. There are a lot of paradigms in life that everybody thinks this is the way it is, and that's not the case. Not at all. So whether you want to be a banker or whether you want to be a musician or whether you want to be a Kentucky Wildcat basketball player, which I wouldn't be, but you can say five feet tall and you can't really do that. <laughs> you, you, you're going to have to take those risks, break a few rules, and come up with some kind of a concept for yourself. And then those of you, is it, does anybody want to go to business for themselves? Is that what anybody want? Actually, be entrepreneurs. Don't be shy. What's that feel like? You guys can be proud that you want to be in business. That's why you're in this club. Right? Right? Now, I to get out of class. Right? Um, over the summer, because I know the school year is almost done, over the summer, I challenge all of you guys to go out there and research some type of a, of a venture that you can go into. And I don't know if you're all familiar with the story of FedEx. You guys familiar with that story? Okay. In college, the, the, the man that started FedEx, uh, his final exam was to create a business, a business plan, create a business, and then turn it in. It would be great enough. He did that, turned it in. Wound up getting, I don't know, maybe a D plus or a C minus. How many people here like to own Federal Express right now? Because that's what he did. He took his business plan and he went out and he made it happen. Now, obviously, the uh, professor that gave him the C minuses is still in college teaching, and this guy's a multi multi millionaire. So, that's even another example of don't let anybody else tell you what can be and what can't be. Because it's, it's not the case. So, all of you entrepreneurs and all you business leaders, this summer, go out and do something. I, even if it's mowing grass, I mean, that, that's a venture. The, regardless of what it is, try to come up with something and start to educate yourself on that. 
And I also challenge you guys to look for solutions to problems in places that you wouldn't expect them to exist. So if you've got a problem with mowing the grass, go try to find a solution in the house. Or if you've got a problem making rock and roll music, then go find a solution in the back. Because they're there, and that's what's going to make it unique, is by finding something that is totally different than, than what you're doing right now. Now since I don't really know what you guys want to know, and if you want to know anything, but I'd like, if anybody has a question, I'd like to... Write your own music? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Um, the music business is very strange. Country music, you don't write your own music. Rock and roll music, you do. And that's one of the things, since all of our management is done out of Nashville, that's one of the things that we have done that's different than a lot of rock bands, is that we collaborate with writers in Nashville. We're probably the greatest songwriters in the world. So you go down there and you wind up with what could have been a mediocre song, you might turn into a hit song. So that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, you think Kiss is cool? Yes. Okay. Uh, Kiss, uh, Bush, the Doodle Dolls, um, 311, I don't know if you guys are 311 fans. Um, there was a, a, the, the Violent Femmes, you guys still love the Violent Femmes? I can't sing either. Huh? I can't sing either. No, they're not very good. They're not very good. But we met them, so. Uh, the Smith uh, Let's see. Uh, Ario Speedwagon, which. But yeah, they, they, we've met a lot of a lot of really neat people, and they're not at all like what you think they are, not whatsoever. I mean, they don't. Well, the Bible things are they're jerks. So, but for instance, Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons are the nicest guys you ever want to meet in your life, and they they're not. I mean, Gene doesn't walk around and spit his blood out. Spit it. Broke it. I broke it. Exactly. <laughs> Very cool. They're, they're great. Are you going to go see them? No. No. But they're, they're coming to town. Oh, yeah. The 30th. And, <laughs> anybody else? Yeah. You said that you started your own production business. Yes. Well, let me ask you something. How sure. did you do that? Because you said you didn't make very much money being a musician. So did you ask people for money or go to a bank? Well, uh, what we did was we internally financed what we do by playing shows. And what you, what, what you can do is if you don't, you don't really have to have any money. You just have to fool everybody into thinking that you, that you, that you got something. So what we did was we went out and solicited the band to play shows and parties and whatever and created this image around the band to make our perceived value a whole lot more. And then, when the money started to roll in, we could funnel it right into the production company. But you hustled a lot of more You hustled a You've got to hustle. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with being a hustler, people. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how you're going to make it. I mean, you've got you to have a certain amount of street smarts to make things happen. Now, if you hustle somebody and you're no good, then you're going to get busted. And so it's all going to cancel itself out. But blow your own horn. If you think you're great, tell everybody you're great. Because nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to come and knock on your door and say, Where's your girl? So, yeah, nothing wrong with us. Anybody else? Yes. You said you're in the music Yeah. Okay, you've seen a lot of bands come and go. Right. The biggest problem with bands today is that they don't look at what they do as a business. That is the biggest problem. Artists have this, that's why most of them are starving. Most of them look at art, whatever they consider art to be, as something that should not be capitalized. You shouldn't 
buy and sell art. It should be something that, that is just there. And that's why they all started it. And that's why you can go to Memphis, Tennessee, and find the finest musicians you'll ever find in the world. In, in the world. And they're broke. They're penniless. Because they're not willing to, and this is a term that you guys have heard before, sell out. That's what, that's what everybody does. If you're going to make a living, if you're going to make a living as a lawyer or a doctor or anything, you're going to have to sell out. Yes? Can I ask a bunch of questions? Do you all... Okay, do you all follow up on Louisville? We started in Louisville. And, and yeah, we're from Louisville. And now we play... The band travels about 2,000 miles a week. Uh, no, they're not international yet, but we are this summer probably going to go over to Japan and play over in Japan. Because it's, once again, over there it's totally different. Okay, who are we open for? Uh, we open uh, for the Smith and Rings, the Vinyl Films, R.A.S. Speedwagon. Uh, we're going to be doing Ozzy this summer. Um, we, had an, we had an opportunity to maybe do the Kiss show, but that didn't happen. We might have an opportunity since... Well, the, yeah, if they can keep wheeling off the, uh, the heroin, they might get to do it, but, you know, he's kind of having a little drug problem. Uh, the organization will gross probably half a million dollars a year. Um, and that is with everything. That's with performance dates, that's with selling t-shirts, uh, albums. And see, that's, we, we control all of that. So there's nobody outside our organization that's making a living off of us. We're making it all ourselves. And I guess that's why Entrepreneur Magazine thought that was unique, and that's why they approached me about, about doing that. Um, we are in the process of working with different sponsorships, people like microphone companies, drum companies, people that sponsor us and give us money and equipment and things like that. So once you get the ball rolling, you can, you can find it. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought of signing other people to your all's label? Yeah, we had, and actually we had a couple of bands that we were thinking about doing that with. But it's, the reason why I didn't do it is because what they wanted was for somebody to come in and do it for them. And the only kind of band that I would ever bring on would be somebody that, that's going to do everything themselves. And all we would do is handle the distribution of the products and things like that. No, I haven't seen it. Goodness, no. I, I wouldn't want another rock band, quite frankly. No, because they work together. Uh, it, it really it adds. One of them adds to the other. Because by actually being the product, so to speak, um, you really, I mean, you're out there in the public every day. You don't lose touch with what people are interested in, what they'll pay to buy, what they won't pay to buy. And then, so, and then being on the other side of it, if you're a good, uh, if you're a good time manager, it won't take that much away. With as much as we travel, you know, we're, we travel, like I said, 2,000 miles a week. And I travel with a portable computer and all that stuff. So I have a lot of time that I can do that. So it really doesn't, it doesn't take away. It kind of adds to it. It kind of makes it that The name was so that people would ask where it came from. And it's something that you don't readily forget. Uh, the Velcro Big Maze is, uh, it's, it's very unusual. And uh, it's, been, it's been written up, it got written up in Rolling Stone and Billboard Magazine. Um, California, they had a contest out there and our band was like, came in third and the best named band in the country and all this kind of silly stuff. So it was really totally unrelated. We were just sitting around at a New Year's Eve party wishing that we had a band and uh, came with a name without for biggest. So I wish I had a better story for you than that, but, but that's the truth. Yeah. Okay. Say you was to sign up a group, right? And that group, you put a lot of money, like you put, in demos and you put over $2 million. Uh -huh. And that group ended up being sucky and nobody bought it. What would you do? I mean, Here's the way that works. If a band gets a record deal, uh, John Cougar Mellencamp, I'll use it as an example. John Cougar Mellencamp's record company was ready to release him. He was a billion dollars in debt and he would have owed them a million dollars. So, 
That's the way that works. Whenever you sign on the line, you're saying, I will leave. That's, that is the idea. See? That's why, that's why it's hard to make money in the music business. That's why there's so many people that are broke. Because they're in debt a million dollars before they ever make a penny. So you're really not making any money, huh? No. I, 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 that's not how I do it. If you, if you did what you asked me, if I signed a band and gave them $2 million, they would owe me $2 million. So I would get my money before they ever got paid. You see how it works? It's not, it's not really that attractive. Not at all. <laughs> all right, it's, the bell rings at what? Correct. Okay, if does anyone have one more, any, any, another question? Yes. Oh, yeah. No, I do not, never. I never, ever, ever listen to our own stuff. Ever. Uh, it depends. I, I used to listen to Green Day because I liked them a lot. Um, I like Garth Brooks. Um, Kiss. I listen to Kiss. Old Van Halen. Uh, the Rolling Stones. And Frank Sinatra. I, I hope that you guys that may have gotten something out of this, if nothing else, maybe an education on the music business and how that is. And the fact that the guys from Kiss are very cool. So maybe you guys can leave at least with that much. And uh, I hope that everybody goes on and, and does great things. And maybe we can. Huh? Yes, they are. Without a doubt. Hey, Blister in the Sun is still a good song, but the Finns themselves are good. <laughs> Thank you, Evan Bill. Fundraiser? Right. I also have some tapes here. 